talking about fostering team of uh, activism with data analytics and we're going to hear from you on how you've built your, your your business on exactly that so perhaps you can start with introducing yourself and telling us what you're really passionate about and who inspires you brilliant thanks uh, thanks Karen it's um, it's really good to be chatting to you again um, so I'm, I'm Alistair, I'm the founder of Sabre. Sabre is a people analytics company. We build software to help teams work well together. Um, I suppose what, what, uh, what I'm passionate about, what caused me to start this company is I really want to see the future. I want to bring about the future a little bit faster um, than, it, than, it's, than it's happening. I'm impatient. But what I really want to do is empower the people who are building that future. Um, I could dedicate my life to one industry uh, and I could do my best to further the efforts of that industry. But what I'm interested in is how I can help lots of people further their abilities and their work in lots of industries. And at Sabre we want to help teams work well together um, so that you know, as a planet we can really achieve uh, even greater feats in the future. Uh, and so Sabre's here to make sure or to ensure that our best really is still to come by helping teams, teams work well together. That sounds great and it's a very positive future you're, you're, you're painting. So you, you did start with one simple uh, question though. So when you started your co-founded your company, you started with one question. What was that? Right. So, so the, the big question we started with was, can we use data to predict team performance? Um, and it was motivated by uh, some research that was done by an academic from Harvard Business School called Noam Wasserman. He had looked at um, the US uh, venture capital industry and their portfolio companies. And he was looking at why these portfolio companies were failing. And about 83% of them, of about 1,500, failed to return any investment to their um, investors. Team dynamics to be the biggest cause of failure was a really interesting question. And so we wanted to see if using data, could we measure team dynamics in a way that could be predictive of this failure rate or this performance? And if you look at classical psychology uh, or personality profiling, things like Myers-Briggs or DISC or Insights or Hogan, these tools are all very interesting for understanding the individual. They're all very interesting for understanding your own behaviors or your own styles, but they can't help you understand or predict the performance that a group of people will have together. And if you think about it, that's because they're focused very much on the individual. So I work very well with introverts. I also work very well with extroverts. So my background is in aerospace engineering and one of the um, uh, one of the things that engineers do is they tend to think fairly logically and try to find root causes. And if you think about it, one of the only things that you've got control over when you start a company is who you work with. And so for that to be the leading cause of failure didn't really make any sense to me. So we wanted to see using data, can we predict whether a team will uh, succeed or, or fail by looking at that team dynamics piece, that those relationships between founders or relationships between the early employees within the business. And if you look at the traditional uh, psychometric industry, um, tools like Myers-Briggs, Belbin, um, DISC, Insights, Hogan, they're all very interesting as methods of assessing an individual. Uh, and they can be useful for understanding your own uh, style and behaviors, but they're not predictive. They can't predict whether a team will work well together. They can't predict the performance of a team. Um, and there's a lot of issues with the credibility of them. So uh, Myers-Briggs has come under a lot of uh, flack recently for not having a scientific underpinning. And we really wanted to think, okay, using really robust data, can we predict uh, metrics or, or attributes of a team that would you know predict the performance of it and if you think about it it's not really down to my individual characteristics I mean I work very well with uh, introverts I also work very well with extroverts it's not your personality it's something else something much deeper which dictates whether we're going to work well together it's down to our relationships so we, st we started by looking at 
relationship data. So we turned to online dating. Um, we looked at about three and a half million people, and we were looking for patterns and successful matches. And we defined a successful match as two people who meet online and then close their account. Because um, in the sort of transactional world of online dating, people go on a lot of dates, but they leave their profiles open just in case they meet somebody better. And so what we did was we looked at uh, couples who had met online and closed their accounts. Um, and there were really surprising uh, consistencies in the data of these successful matches. So we took these insights, tried to strip out as much of the romance as possible, and combined it with some of the more consistent theories from academic behavior research. Things like, for a team with a broad set of tasks, it's beneficial to have a diverse set of behaviors. So we measured the behaviors using the big five, and we combined that with some of our insight from, from dating. And we had what we thought would be a good way to measure team dynamics uh, that could hopefully predict outcomes. And we wanted to see if we could predict which team would win the competition without any knowledge of their skills, their experience, their demographic, or their skills, um, or their experience. So none of the classic uh, um, indicators that you would have if you were looking to hire somebody into a company or none of the indicators that you would have as a venture capitalist looking to evaluate whether that team was going to do well or not. The competition was a week long. There were about eight teams in, uh, of about eight people in each team. And our software simply made a prediction about the quality of the relationships within, that, within those teams and then ranked the teams from, we think this team is going to have the best quality team dynamics to we think this team is going to have the worst quality team dynamics. And at the end of the week, after the judges announced their results, the sealed envelope was open and we got the precise ranking of all eight teams spot on. Wow. So we could say or put data to what we all know to be true, which is who you work with has a much bigger impact on your ability to perform than your individual skills. And in today's world, we're required to adopt or learn new skills at an ever increasing rate. And so my ability to learn new skills and adapt to the changes that we're seeing in, in the world really relies upon my relationships that I have with my colleagues, my peers. And so that's what Sabre looks at, is um, trying to bring data to this very hard to measure, um, yet critical element of team performance, which is the softer side, the how we relate to each other, um, and use that to help design teams that are likely to have higher levels of performance. So that sounds great, and it sounds as if finally um, you can help some of the people people um, leapfrog into the 21st century with predictive analytics. Um, so how about sharing um, some of the recent examples of um, some of the client work that you've been able to do and that, that has really helped them solve some of the problems they've brought to you? Yeah. So. Sabre software um, is, in its current format, is extremely good for uh, diagnosing the issues within teams and, and designing teams that uh, won't have issues in the future. So we've worked with some uh, multinational banks to help them figure out what is causing or driving uh, attrition rates within their service centers and also the quality of customer service within their service centers. So our hypothesis going in was my relationships with my team as a service center employee has a big impact on my happiness at work, which has an impact on two things. It impacts my ability to deliver good service to our customers and our clients. And it also impacts the, uh, my willingness to stay at my job uh, and with my team. Um, and, and we're finding that to be true. We found that to be true in, in a number of cases, not just in the banks. That attrition rates uh, and softer metrics of performance um, have a big correlation with uh, the relationships that you have with your team. We've also helped small startups who are growing very quickly double their headcount without introducing uh, issues with their culture. So in the tech space, we find that companies are very, very keen to craft a culture and maintain that culture as they grow very, very quickly. And one of the concerns that you have when you grow very quickly is how do we protect the culture that we've got? But maybe 
you can share as well some of the uh, ex one example of, of where your data hasn't been listened to um, and you know what, what are the problems or the risks that were incurred because they didn't listen to your recommendations yeah absolutely uh, so this this concept of bias is is very interesting um, and the problem with uh, human judgment um, is that it's a black box. It's very hard for me to prove to you why I get a good feeling about you. Um, and what software allows you to do is say, well, this is how we are judging the fit. And we can then interrogate whether that method of evaluating fit is good or not, and up to, up to scratch. As a scientist, um, Alistair, what um, fascinates you the most about people management and the whole sort of art and science um, around it that you're really, uh, you know, you're really moving the cursor on it, but what, what fascinates you the most in people management? The thing that fascinates me, so from a very engineering perspective, the, the job of an engineer is to understand a system well enough to the point where they can design it to be better. And to me, there is no more fascinating uh, system than, than how humans interact with each other. But there's also no more important system. So humans drive everything that affects us, from global political movements down to how I feel going to work every day. So much of that is dependent upon how people work together. And the potential that humans have to achieve really astounding feats when we work well together is so great and so aspirational and worth working towards. But most of the time, teams that we end up working with are built using chance or luck or, um, you know, just sort of without consideration for what impact the people will have on each other. And so for me, What's fascinating is trying to use data to describe what is an incredibly complex process. And I would be the first to say that Sabre's data is really just scratching the surface. And we're measuring a few elements of human characteristics. We're not being able to measure everything about you. We can't capture you in your perfect uniqueness. But in this environment, you don't need to be perfect in order to make really big improvements on the status quo. And so for me, what, what drives me is to shed a little bit of light. Thanks, Alistair. Um, how do you see the future? This is the, the last question we have, and it's a, a question that's come through from the LinkedIn HR group. How do you see the future? Um, will robots be recruiting um, individuals and, and team leaders in the future? This is a question we, we get a lot, um, actually. And robots, robots aren't going to replace humans. They're going to replace tasks. But people aren't going anywhere. Um, for every new piece of artificial intelligence, we don't lose a human being. Uh, and the rhetoric at the moment seems to be, hey, humans, you really need to start understanding this whole technology thing. And I think the conversation of the future is going to shift to, hey, technology, you really need to understand how humans work. And humans will always, will continue to interact with each other, will continue to create meaning and purpose um, through relationships. And for me, the interesting thing is, how can machines start to understand human relationships? How can machines start to interact with us in a way that can enhance our relationships with each other rather than replace our relationships with each other? So I think we will see an ever-increasing role of artificial intelligence and machines in the workplace. But for me, this should be seen as an opportunity. Uh, it should be seen as a, um, a new resource. And rather than replacing us, it's going to empower us to be able to do more and more uh, things that we find interesting and take away some of the more um, uh, boring tasks or laborious tasks that humans don't want to, don't want to have to do. Thanks, Alistair. It's definitely been a very data-driven but hopeful, positive view on the on, on the world where Saber can help right now and also help design that, that hopeful future. Um, if people are keen to, to follow up on the topic and understand a bit more um, about it, what advice would you would you give them? 
there are uh, a, a, an increasing number of uh, researchers looking into this. So from an academic uh, perspective, if you're interested in understanding some of the more technical aspects of human network uh, theory, um, Alex Pentland or Sandy Pentland from MIT uh, has been doing some fascinating work, which he terms social physics. On the on the softer side um, uh, of five dysfunctions of a team, um, are really good places to start to understand what causes teams to trip up. Of course, at Saber, we always love to speak to people who have questions about this. Um, so feel free to reach out to us at saber.com um, and we'll be able to sort of engage in that discussion. We're always looking to, to learn uh, and give back to the community. Yeah, and I just encourage our audience to carry on asking those big questions and then reach out to the, the right partners um, to, to, to move forward. I, I don't think there's a question that, that, that needs to be um, unanswered today and it definitely sounds as if Sabera are taking some of those big questions forward. Um, thank you very much, Alistair, and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you, Karen.